Hey everyone, Nick Dearbird is here teaching you financial modeling. And today we're going to be completing a lab exercise in Python looking at conditionals. So this is the first lab exercise in the uh, Going Beyond an Initial Python Script lecture series. Uh, and this one is focused on conditionals. So this is the lab exercise on the slides. And then we also have an accompanying uh, Jupyter Notebook for all the exercises in this lecture series. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump over to that. Um, so here we're just focusing on the conditionals portion of these exercises, and we've got three exercises here to complete. So the first exercise here says make a condition that should print yes it is five, if the value of this variable is five, and no it is not five if it is not. Um, so let's go ahead and set that up. So uh, what we have to do is write our conditional statement with an if. Um, so if, and then, you know, now that we've written our if, next part is the logical condition that we want to check. Um, so the logical condition, here we're checking if the value is five. So if my bar uh, double equals five, and it's double equals for comparing things, whereas single equals is for assigning things. And so now uh, we have if the variable is equal to five, um, and then a colon and then indentation are the other parts that we need for this if statement. Um, so in this case where it does going to, or it is equal to five, we're going to say yes, it is five. And in the other case where it's not equal to five, then we're going to put no, it is not five. Um, and else is going to run whenever this condition is false. Um, so we run this and we see uh, because the value was five that we do indeed get yes, it is five. And as soon as we change it to some other value, then we get no, it is not five. Um, so that is what the exercise expected. Then coming to exercise two, uh, it asks you to print all the items which start with A. And if it does not start with A, then print not starting with A. Um, so, uh, you know, you see a list and you wanna do something for each item in that list, you should naturally think to use a for loop for that. Um, so here, uh, you know, we can do for item in items. Uh, well, let's start by just printing the item. So we're starting to get there. Uh, we are getting all the items with A printed, uh, but the issue is that we're also getting the ones that don't start with A printed as well. So how can we um, handle that? So um, we want to figure out, uh, does this item that we're getting start with the letter A? Um, so what we can check um, for strings we have uh, this starts with uh, method so you can do you know starts with a that would be true does this start with b no that's false because it starts with a um, so we can do that to check um, another uh, way that would work is uh, you can uh, index strings as well so the first item in that uh, string is the character A, and so you could check uh, if the first character is equal to A, that would also get at this um, same exact concept. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with the starts with um, setup for now. So it would be if item dot starts with um, A, and then we're going to print the item. So let's see if that worked for us. Um, so indeed, now we only see the items that start with A, but the exercise did say uh, if it does not start with A, then print not starting with A. So again, this is something we want to do uh, in the case where the logical condition is false uh, because we checked does it start with A. Now we want to do something if it does not start with A. Um, so again, that's where uh, an else clause would be appropriate. So in that case, we're going to print not starting with A. Um, so then we indeed get the A items, and then on the ones that don't start with A, we get not starting with A. So that's exactly what we want. 
Um, and then just to show that this works the same um, with the other approach, uh, indexing to pull out the first character and checking if that's equal to A, uh, we get the exact same result there. So either solution works just fine here. Then coming to exercise three, we're trying to find the sum of the items which are under 10 in the list. So, uh, you know, there's a number of different ways we could go about this. Um, but, you know, again, we want to work with all these items. Uh, you know, probably we want to work with them one by one. And so a list is, or a loop, or loop is going to be appropriate to help us out here. Um, so again, for item in my items, uh, you know, we can always start with the basic, you know, just print out the items. Um, but we don't want to just print the item, right? We want to have kind of a running total of the items and we want to ultimately figure out the sum of them. So uh, we can do this with a common pattern in programming where you start some variable, which is, you know, like either it's a, a number which you're going to keep adding to or you know doing other operations with as you go through uh, or a string which you can be adding ad additional parts onto things like that um, so we'll set up our um, total variable as being zero at the beginning and then we can add to that each time um, so we can say you know the total um, the total is equal to what it already was plus the item um, and then to see what's going on, let's print the item and the total that we've reached. Um, so we can see as we go through, you know, the total starts out at one and then it adds 15 to get to 16, it adds 10 to get to 26. So this is working properly to total the items. Um, and then, you know, at the end we have this total variable which contains the total from, you know, going through all of the different items. Um, but, you know, we're getting close. Now we are able to add up, you know, each of these numbers, but the exercise asked, find the sum of items which are under 10. Uh, so again, if the item is under 10, we want to add it. Otherwise, we don't want to add it. So um, this again comes to an if condition, a conditional. Um, so if the item is less than 10, then we're going to do what uh, we were already doing. Otherwise, we don't want to do anything. So in this case, we don't actually need an else clause uh, because we don't have anything to do for the numbers over 10. We just ignore them, we just keep going, and so we only have the if here. Um, so now we run this again. Uh, now we see it adds only one, eight, and five, which are all of the three numbers which are under 10. And so we get to the total of 14 as a result. Um, and, you know, you don't necessarily need this print statement going through, um, so then your uh, final solution could look something like that, uh, where you just show the end result rather than printing it every time as you go through. So that's the uh, Python Basics Lab exercises on conditionals. So thanks for listening, and see you next time.